is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax your buds, listen to the art of wrestling. A professional wrestling podcast. It's a live podcast. It's personal journals and entry way into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I'm a live performer. I'm a live podcaster. I'm a live comedian. I'm a live baby. <laughs> Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am sitting here live in my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is a fan support and listener support podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCabana.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support. Rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, tell a friend, let the world know. Best way that you can support, though, ColtMerge.com, DigitalColt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, premium podcasts, The Wrestling Road Diaries. Did you see the little movie I made? I made that. In shitty iMovie, I put it together and I put it on my social media accounts that should only drive you to go to coltmerch.com digitalcult.com and it, it did remind me that once again i probably need a new laptop as there is not much space on the old macbook i think it's because i taped all the episodes from the fringe and then i imported it right to imovie and now they're just sitting on imovie if anyone knows how i move them from imovie to an external hard drive that i have Wrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can always use help with shit like that. And that's what's fun about this. Hey, you need something? I'll help you out. You need some comedy wrestling? Got it. You need an hour wasted of your day? Great. I got you every single Thursday. We will do it. We will waste your time because you need something to do. And that's what we're doing today. Ken Anderson and Sean Devari. Sean becomes a third timer. If you don't know Sean Devari, the very first person to do the art of wrestling. He was guest number one. We were on the road a lot. He's such a great friend. He's been there for a long time for me. And when I was like, hey, I'm thinking of trying this weird thing. Will you just do it with me? He was like, of course. Happy to do it. Joined by Ken Anderson, a guy who was on probably the third show or the second show that I ever wrestled on. You might have known him then as Two Rivers Jack. <laughs> that was a nickname given by Rock and Randy Ricci, bless his heart. And together they have started a wrestling academy in Minnesota. And it's great. I went up there. I did a seminar. They'll talk all about it. On here, we'll, I mean, it's a chat. It's a chat. It's a wrestling chat. I mean, that's, that's essentially, it's in a locker room, just bullshitting for an hour, and you guys get to be a fly on the wall. Hope you enjoy it. And then I hope you sign up if you want to be a pro wrestler. And use that code Colt. You can save 500 bucks. It's a commercial, and it's a podcast. It works on so many, so many levels. Speaking of working, boy, I was working this weekend. I was traveling around Thursday, Minnesota, first wrestling, Wrestlepalooza. Eric Cannon puts on such a wonderful, wonderful event. It's that hybrid of uh, punk rock wrestling. If you're not on it, you should be. And if you're a big city and you're not putting this on somewhere at a cool bar, then uh, you're the one losing money. And if you want to, just hit up Cannon, especially if you're in the Midwest, because we've done these shows in, in Iowa and Minnesota, and it's not hard to travel around a little bit. From there, first time in Boise, Idaho, a real early flight, of course, a layover. Marty and I went to Boise, Idaho. We did the 208 Comedy Festival and uh, a wonderful crowd. Great to see a nice crowd come out, support. I knew there were some Idaho fans out there. They don't get to see a lot of wrestling. There is an Idaho wrestle club, but the hot independent scene hasn't made its way to Boise, and it could. You know, it could easily, if done and promoted the right way, why don't you give Eric Cannon a, a talk and bring old first wrestling over there? But it was fun to be a part of uh, a comedy festival, and if you know someone who runs a comedy festival and they want to bring Marty and Colt to town, you should tell them that. We should come. We should come to your comedy festival. Then, another layover, another long trip, Boise, Idaho, to New Jersey, Wrestle Pro. I wrestled Bobby Lashley. I Listen, I tapped out Bobby Lashley. I don't want to brag. It was real. It was an MMA-style match in professional wrestling, and I know Bobby is with Bellator, but I, listen, I've seen a couple of episodes of The Ultimate Fighter, I've had Dan Severin on this podcast. I had Tom Lawler on the podcast. I'm learning things, and I'm picking it up. So, yes, what does that mean? I want Tank Abbott in the cage. <laughs> Give me Tank Abbott. 
That's right. You heard it here first. A challenge to Tank Abbott. The next day I did a live podcast at the Now Hear This Podcast Festival. That episode will come out in a little bit. I wanted to give a little, a little breathing room in between live shows. But uh, it should be one that uh, I hope everyone's super interested in. And I will give a spoiler. Ryback was on the show and we talked about stuff. Yeah, that's right. That stuff. And uh, so much that uh, I should I should have him on for a one-on-one. I think uh, it's about time. So you're going to have to wait a couple of weeks till that comes out. Should be worth the wait. But luckily this week you get to listen to Ken Anderson, Mr. Ken Anderson, and Sean Devari talk about upper Midwest professional wrestling, WWE, and of course their wrestling school. Before we get into it, though, I do have a song of the week, and the song of the week is brought to you by Chubbies. Yes, I said that right, and you heard it right. Chubbies. Hey, free those legs. I wear sandals because I want my feet to breathe, and we wear Chubbies so our legs aren't all stuffed up. Chubbies were built with your thighs in mind. I got a pair of Schwartz. That's, it sounds Jewish, but it's, it's half sweatpants, half short, and also half the material because my legs, ooh, they were a showing. I told Trevor Lee about my new sponsor, Chubbies, and his mouth dropped. He was so excited. He knew all about them. He got super jealous. It's an easy sell, so I'm going to do it right now. Great fabric that's got the right amount of stretch and range of motion and designs that are kind of unlike anything you've ever seen before. Make every day the weekend when you put on a pair of chubbies. They're so comfortable, you're going to want to wear them every single day. The shorts revolution is underway. That rhymed. I didn't mean it to, but it did. Go to chubbies.com slash wrestling and get free two-day shipping. That's C-H-U-B-B-I-E-S dot com slash wrestling to get those chubsters in just two business days chubbies.com slash wrestling the song of the week is by the punk rock band dick neptune and the microwave ovens they just put out a new album buy their songs at dick neptune the microwave ovens dot and follow them on instagram at dick neptune the song it's called i want to be a wrestler and if you really do you would go to the academy of professional wrestling in minneapolis minnesota all right enjoy it and we'll be back with ken anderson and sean Devari. Hi, and welcome to the show. The Art of Wrestling, live from... Live from Sean Devari's apartment. Oh, you fucking didn't even do it. Do the thing, I'd do it beforehand, but we, we've, we've learned that you don't listen to the show. No, live any from podcast. Sean Devary's Studio. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, man. That's my favorite. <laughs> when you make fun of my jokes? No, the masters. Ha oh. ha. <laughs> oh, on that case. Ha ha. Uh, all right, so to give some context to uh, what's going on here... Uh, we are in Sean's apartment. See, si. uh, Sean has a long cord that he's requested. Uh, and Ken, I've, I've been told that you guys do. I've been doing a lot of like interviews and stuff together now. Yep. And so, is That's it just correct? Is that is it just? This is the first time he's requested that in his rider, though. <laughs> yeah. and Two sugar-free Red Bulls on ice, one regular, and, and a it, very long cord. Play Red Bulls. And is it just who is that impression of? Booker T. No, oh, Red Bulls were a huge problem in WWE. Oh, Fucking Stacy Keebler had he, Red Bulls in her rider after she was Dancing with the Stars. He would always bring two Red Bulls and he would stuff them down into the cooler that was filled with like thirty waters and fifty Gatorades mm. and, and that. And there would be two Red Bulls in there, and inevitably, almost every day, he would come in there at some point to get the Red Bulls up and they'd be gone. They'd be gone because. It's just like, hey, here's all this free stuff. Oh, right. oh, great, two Red Bulls. Oh, there's two Red Bulls left. So how, how, you obviously get hot. And one time I saw him body slam the cooler. He picked that fucking cooler up. Uh, the, which was, was a, filled with like ten gallons of water. This is a whole ordeal. I remember it was insane. And he, and he blamed you on. Right. He blamed us for not seeing who did it. Yeah. Me and Paul were sitting. Uh, you don't want to be a stooge. Who's Paul? Triple H. London Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so should we go into the story? Sure. So fucking. This is why it was kind of confusing. If you were with the SmackDown crew, it's pretty common knowledge that there's two Red Bulls, there's always waters and Gatorades. If there's anything other than water or Gatorade, probably belongs to somebody. If it's two Red Bulls, pretty obvious to all of us, it was Booker T's. And I'm pretty sure this is why they start putting the locals into their own dressing room. Because remember, we used to always go in for dark matches and stuff. We changed that. Oh, really? But I was, you, you started doing them a little sooner than I did. Yeah, so we just changed in the dressing room, right. which was great. I think the worst thing they've done is separate the extras because they're definitely extra. Like, it's not, you're not there for a tryout. You're there as a jobber. Mm. It's like, it's well known. Mm. But when you were dressing with everybody else, like, you were just another guy trying to get a job. It was a tryout. You weren't a jobber. You feel like a real wrestler. You feel like you're part of... Uh, you're Could part you imagine of- showing up to an indie show and then like, hey, uh, you guys go change in that locker room and you guys go change it. No. Yeah, it's the like, Bullet Club doesn't know. Ring get the fuck out, really? <laughs> 
<laughs> Shut up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so anyways, uh, Tom Howard, the shoot fighter from California. Yeah. He came in. He's not with us. He never knows. And he just looks in the cooler and there's probably, Booker probably drank once. There's probably a couple waters, a couple Gatorades and a Red Bull. And he grabbed the Red Bull, drank it. Nobody even knew this happened. Later, like right before showtime, Booker usually drinks his second Red Bull and he gets in there. It's not in there. And he fucking, mind you, TV's after a long loop. We might've been coming off international tour. I have no idea. He's probably hanging on by a thread anyways. He fucking throws it. Who the fuck took my Red Bull? Fucking cooler, like a five foot tall cooler. Like when he's at a gas station filled with ice. That thing must have weighed like 300 pounds. I know who the fuck took it. I know somebody saw it. I know somebody saw it. Me and Paul are in there just chit chatting and he looks over and goes, you saw it. Who did it? And I was like, does he know we saw it? Because maybe I did. I'm trying to think. Like He's so convincing. I was like, did I see who took it? We don't know. And then later, somehow, somebody found out it was Tom Howard. And fucking Michael Hayes like brings him in the locker room in front of everybody to apologize to Booker. And I was like, I felt so bad for Tom. I was like, god damn. Like, it's a fucking accident. Like, yeah, that, I thought that was the one. Because this happened. The Shane Twins yeah, did it once, too. The Shane twins but they came it. back with Red Bulls because they, they didn't know. And bought a case of Red Bulls. Of course Bulls they did. Them, you know, his, his penance for would you do it over the top and cheesy? Like, uh, here you go, my. I'd buy like yeah. for the joke. I think I'd buy him like two thousand Red Bulls. Exactly. <laughs> totally, totally. That's what I did at TNA. I got I got in trouble for I went to wrestlers court for making fun of Billy, and they said I hadn't been there long enough to make fun of somebody. Billy Corgan, Billy Gunn. Oh, and then uh, I said Billy Corgan. You did. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> so I, no, I make fun of him all the time. That's old hat. Uh, no. Billy Gunn, I made fun of him, and then they're like, hey, you haven't been here. And I was new to TNA, but I knew Billy from, you know, 2004 and five. He worked in WWE. Sure. I mean, and you know him so well, you refer to him just as Billy on a wrestling podcast. I've said that. give reference to anything else besides I that. should have said Cute Kip. So you Cute Kip, so the Kipper, uh, Monty Sop yeah. Gunn. Terry? I was talking to Paul, you know, Triple H to you guys. Uh what was the rib? Oh, I, I got my trouble is I had to buy a case of beer for the locker room, and I went and spent like four hundred dollars. I built a bar in the back of <laughs> TNA. We had like neon lights and fucking bottles of booze. I went and print flyers like you know party after the show in the locker room, and like even the guys that never hung out like Sting and Booker and Charmel showed up. We all agreed. You know exactly what you said. It, like that Booker too was like, where's my, where's those Red Bulls at though? I didn't get any Red Bull, but I got him Hennessy because he drinks Hennessy. So I had he had his own bottle. And right, right. It was just weird. Sting was there. That Sting never would hang out with anybody, and it was just like it was such a. We were talking about the wrestlers' court used to end up at the end of the day. It was a fun thing, mm. and it was super fun. It was my first time having a wrestler, and I was the guy that got in trouble. And it was fun for everybody, including me. It was great. It wasn't fun when I was in WWE. Oh, it fucking sucked. Did you do wrestlers' court? No, I, I just witnessed. So, and it wasn't like a proper wrestlers' court where they had the fucking jailer and the bailiff and a judge, and it was just. Like makeshift wrestlers court on the back of a bus or something like that on the way. And people being upset with people. Uh-huh. And it was, or at a, at a hotel bar one night. Those are the worst. They put, uh, they put you sounded so Canadian no right trial. there. What's that? Hotel bar. Hotel bar. This bar. <laughs> so, oh, my leg. My leg hurts so bad. Oh, cripes. It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out that often with you. We went fishing. We caught some carp. Yeah. Uh, sorry, go on. No, no, just wasn't it was fun. Just, just a witness. It wasn't fun, and it was, it was scary. You mm. know, like, and, and then when I got to TNA, both it, there were two wrestlers courts when I was at TNA. They were both just awesome. One was they put the Pope on trial for stealing a card table out of one of the trailers, and it happened to be um, Hebner and AJ would play cards every day, and Pope just went into his trailer and said, oh, "I need a, I need a table." I need a trailer. I need a table, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Four foot by four foot square, daddy. was Grado did something which no. shall remain nameless. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but it was the most fun we've ever had at Wrestlers. Were you around with Grado ever. there? Yeah, you oh, must have yeah, been, huh? Yeah. Love Grado. What, Love a, Grado. what, a, what a character, huh? Yeah. Friend, yeah. Of the, friend of the show. Good old Grado. It's my hero. Sean Devary fell in love with him. I still am in love with him. I, I don't know. Where did you... Did I play something? No, Cabana no. told me. Like, I'm sorry. What was, what, what was my name again? From, from oh. Mr. Colt Cabana. And it says, on his birth certificate, Colt, middle name, boom, boom, last name, Cabana. Thank you very much. On the bottom, where next to his parents' signature, it says theme music, uh, Copacabana. Mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. that's... Who's Scott? Who's later, Scott later, ch- later changed to Kid Russell. <laughs> and then uh, I like that one better. You sent me the MP3. I had it like, on my playlist for a while. As you should. Um, was- the first show I was ever on was the one at the watering hole. The next night we were in like Whitewater, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And you and Punk were on the show. Do you remember? Was it you and Punk that wore the 
the uh, nylon stockings or whatever. Or yeah, I but one I, of you guys, like Texas Hangman or something. No, we were, no, no, it was called the, the Goons, Goons, the Goon Squad, yeah. right? Uh, the, well, the, where was the watering hole? At, the watering hole is in Green Bay. It's that sand volleyball court. Um, I, I I think you ever done it. No. You would know if you did. But the first time we, th- this must have not have been me. No, I'm pretty sure you were on the because the first on the one show. we ever met was in Whitewater, Wisconsin, where you wrestled uh, Tank, Tank Thomas. Tank Thomas, remember that one? The big maybe just the guy, where he he wrestled big as fat Golga, guy. but he wrestled. I as think Golga, so, maybe. Yeah. Golga. or maybe you did wrestle. Yeah, that Golga was the that second night. night. It was Friday night. I was at the watering hole. That was my first match ever. And then the okay. next night was in Whitewater. Yes, I was there in Whitewater. Yep. Yes, and it was like fifty people. I got no music. Yes, he called me Two Rivers Jack. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna be Two Rivers Jack. Right. Yeah. I wasn't there the hey. first night, so hey. I was there your second night of wrestling, right. which was also uh, my second or third match mm. because I I think. It was that uh, either I wrestled. There was an infamous match where Aiden O'Shea and I were the were the. Um, okay, so wait, was it Eight Ball and Chains? Was one of those guys there? No, oh, but I I was on <laughs> that where like um, Ace DDT Randy. Yes, where they Randy got the, yes, Ace, and I was in that like match. Bowling ball hitting the ground. I, I was in that. that match. Okay, but also I think the other one was Sean. We won't exclude you. You can't play on your phone right now. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, We're making fun of you guys and your two river jacks. <laughs> but uh, I was wrestling uh, Tom, tough Tom, tough Tom of the Texas Hangman. Disorderly Con. Disorderly Con. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he was in WCW at the time. So again, this is my second or third match. And I probably told this story, but uh, you know, that's a huge deal. Like imagine your students. Yeah. Sure. And they get to wrestle Jerry Lynn or whatever it might be. Sure. Even even like I wonder what the equivalent would now what would be. Equi- someone like on Superstars, you know, like a yeah. event or something. Because or like a 205 guy. Yeah, because Tough Tom was on Thunder Saturday shit. night. Yeah, yeah and Thunder. Sure. And Nitro sometimes. You know? We were the me and Aiden O'Shea were doing the Goon Squad, and he's a narcoleptic. And so we were doing the Killer Bees roll in, roll out. He rolled in for me within the first two minutes and got pinned and fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> My second or third match. Uh, against, oh, is this story not more famous? I've never heard this. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. That's <laughs> incredible. You really? You never heard that one? He fell asleep? He fell asleep within the first spot? Ken oh. could do that. I, I, Ken sometimes falls asleep in a blink. <laughs> like, we'll be talking to him, and he'll blink and just not wake back up. That was Daniel Pewter at uh, OVW. What? He <clears> they actually, they were going to, he would, somebody would be talking in the front of the class. I remember one time Bully... Bubba and uh, Devon came down to the school. Bully, they Bubba, were, and Devon? Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 all three of them. Bully, Bubba and Devon Dudley, came down to the school. They were, they were talking at the front of the, you know, everybody was sitting in the bleachers and they were talking to everybody. And Dreamer looked over and saw fucking Pewter. And he hit him with a bottle and he was like, Do you know what the fuck B- Bubba Ray Dudley would do to you if he found right. you sleep? Dreamer's so nice, huh? Yeah. yeah. Like, and then he, Johnny got mad at him that day because, No, you got to let these guys burn. You just gotta let him burn, man. Now, Instead is he have actual narcolepsy, or he fucking just fell asleep? Um, I don't know. He I fell asleep every single day, and we actually were gonna work it into know. a spot where he did like a drop down, and then just <laughs> fell asleep. But you know, he was, and I don't, I don't know him well, you but I with a motherfucker. Like, I could only, ass- I could only assume he was a party guy. He was out. No, he, no. no. I'd assume if I, if any if I learned anything from Tough Enough on television, <laughs> where he pinned Kurt Angle. Were you there uh, after was, were, he hurt Kurt? Were you there like? Was he at OVW when he did that? And did he come to OVW no, the next I day? No, no, he, I was he went to OVW because of that. Me and Muhammad hadn't started yet, so we would have to go to both TVs. And we were on Smack, we were going Raw and SmackDown while that Tough Enough thing was happening. And I would go in the stands every time and watch, like, because like, no one knew who we were. So I could just walk out once the dark match was over and I'd just sit in the stands and watch the shows from like hard cam. Yeah. And I watched that whole Tough Enough program for fucking the whole thing till the end of it. And what'd you learn from it? I remember just thinking, like, this is, I don't know what their best case scenario is. <laughs> I, I remember for that specific one, I remember, okay, so they're going to wrestle Kurt. Kurt's going to kill all of them. Great. Kurt should kill anybody who's not a wrestler. And they're like, but fucking a Mark hits him in the head of the beer bottle, knocks him out cold. Get, like, what is your best case scenario for coming out of this? I didn't get it. I didn't think, oh, if, we, if this goes exactly as we planned, this happens. There was no fucking payoff to any of it. That's all I kept thinking. Did you think that about your, you and Muhammad also? I had no idea how good that was going to go. I, I really thought, when they said that, I was like, man, it's like 2004. Like a, a foreign wrestler is not going to work. I have no idea. Have we talked about that on here at all? I hope not. I don't know. We never have. <laughs> every, every other fucking podcast. Has. Yeah, I know. But, but I can tell you better shit because I know you'd ask the right questions. Oh. What, what was that? Did anyone ever threaten to beat you up? No. 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 That's not, I, were, were people really mad at you? No. Fuck. 
Ask a good question. I'm not asking a question. We're just talking. <laughs> I'm, that's my. That's me doing every other podcast. I understand. Ever. Hmm. Thank my you. Frustration. They go on Wikipedia and then just ask you to confirm what they are. Is Two know. Rivers Jack on Wikipedia? I think it is. It is. So <laughs> they would know that <laughs> one. <laughs> Wait, Two Rivers get, Jack. They don't know what, why I was Two Rivers Jack. Did we get to uh, there was? So we were we were hitting a story there with that when you were in Whitewater and it had to do with entrance music. Well, I was I just, think. No, I was asking. If you were on that second show, and you were, because Punk was on that show for sure. And I remember years later, we were at WrestleMania 23 at the top of the ladder. It was like the spot right before I knocked him off and grabbed the briefcase. And he came up, and we were trading blows in front of all those people and you know all the people on, on pay-per-view. And he said, ah, this is, we've come a little ways since Whitewater, Wisconsin, huh? Are there two rivers? Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Little old two rivers? Yeah. What, are you looking it up, Sean? Nothing about Two Rivers, Jack. Actually, your professional wrestling career started in 2002 with NWA TNA, apparently. Oh, wow. This is tremendous. I didn't know uh, that. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, Successful so- tag run with the young Sean DeVar. Yeah, right. So, uh, we're talk- so you're talking about Tom Howard. Uh, oh, yeah. What did he do? He, sorry. He, so he grabs the Red Bull, right? And earlier today, and we won't mention the name, but we were talking about somebody who, who did a match and got weird heat for like a little thing. Yep. Um, Recently, right? Yeah, yeah. And so then it's just, it's just like you're like, oh, he can never win in those situations. I, and I guess I, like I'm trying to think of things that maybe were you guys ever like weird? Did you ever come upon those things when you were doing? Because Ken and, and both you guys did a lot of enhancement stuff and a lot of you were on Heat. Who are some of your your classic Heat matches with? <laughs> Ken had fucking um, bad luck. Oh, wow. big. Sean O'Hare. Um, I had Rodney Mack twice. I had the, I think I had the first White Boy Challenge. I don't know if you remember that. I don't. Yeah, well, I was doing this of... white boy challenge where they just pull somebody out of the audience randomly. Yeah. Air quotes randomly. I think, uh, and actually, I think um, Earthquake was the first white boy challenge. Was it? Ever. <laughs> he got pulled out of the. He was a white guy. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to think of. Did you get away with that, that today? Are... With what? Doing a white boy challenge? I don't believe so. You could. You could. They, well, would, they would never do it, but you could. Yeah. Anything done well can be done. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So you were the first white boy. First white boy. How'd you feel about that? Uh, it was fine. It was great. I mean, he was under I, the impression there was, was like three billion of them, but it turns out he was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I was on the very last velocity, and I always mm. like, oh, that's a fun little thing. I, cool. I defended you to Johnny so much when they kept saying like, we saw nothing in him. I was like, how can you see anything in a guy that gets squashed by Umaga with a thumb? Jeans to get to five minutes. his foot in his mouth or whatever the fuck you guys did. Like, what what could he have possibly showed you? Yeah. Like you and then he kind of was like, I remember we had to do a match for him at WrestleMania uh, that week at the hotel. And he no showed. He no showed and then But I remember that was something that was very important to me. I said everybody helped me out so much. I'd never have a bad dark match story. Everybody made me look like a billion dollars as best they could. So you never did anything dumb backstage by accident? Always by accident, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I'm talking about no, Jesus. man. Don't get hot. Jeez. That's why you need a fanny pack. Uh, you? No, but I was going to say I was Fuck, almost man. goaded into a couple different times. There was, um, I remember Umaga and Rosie, uh, what is it, three-minute warning, uh, Rosie and Jamal were getting, you know, every week it would come out that they had hurt somebody. Like somebody's shoulder got torn out because they got stiffed by Rosie and Jamal and three minute order in, in real dangerous life. danger. Yeah. Like yeah. during the match, but they were just being careless and reckless with their opponents because they were just jobbers. And I remember I went there and Sergeant Slaughter came up with the, the sheet and there would always be like, you know, Scotty too hottie versus blank and Funaki versus blank. And then there was three minute warning versus blank blank. And he came up and he goes, uh, who should I put in this, this spot right here? And he pointed at three minute warning and I'm like, this is a this is a test, right? You know, like, and I said, I'll I'll do it. And then he said, uh, and who will your partner be? And I said, uh, Dino Bambino. And you know, ended up getting slotted in there. Had I said, you know, Sean Devari, Sean Devari, yeah, right. <laughs> Live wire, Johnny Parks, and Sean yeah. Devari. I'm perfect for that spot. You know, it might have gotten me a little little burial, or I wouldn't have gotten work that night. Or he just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, <he> maybe, <laughs> maybe. But at the time, you're reading everything into yeah. Anything into everything, right? And there was another time, um, uh, Sean O'Hare kicked the fuck out of me. He fuck. snapmared me. That was a jobber's nightmare, is he, to see Sean O'Hare versus Blank uh-huh. on the board. And you're sweating, seeing whose name they Did he do in there. Tyson, or was it Jindrak? Jindrak did, but I think it was a freak accident. Right, okay, okay. Sean O'Hare was actually hurting people, not by freak accidents. Mm. Yeah, I remember he said, uh, he'll, 
he was going to snap mirror me, put me in a hold. Uh, when the ref asks you, you say no, and I'm going to get mad, and I'm going to kick you in the back. And he fucking kicked the shit out of me. My lungs jumped out of my chest. The eyelids of his boots were like welted into your skin. Yeah, and I remember he came back, and he did it twice. And I remember coming back, and Arn just said, uh, hey, uh, tell me something. How are those kicks? And I said, they're fine. Yeah. You know, I was like, but he had knows. I said, he knew, he goes, uh, the motherfucker's going to hurt somebody. <laughs> but had I said anything but they were fine, yeah, O'Hare might have gotten a little heat for it. But Probably not. I would have gotten mega heat for that. A lot of oh, shit is common sense that we did. Like, uh, kids ask questions all the time at the academy, and it's just like, dude, just use common sense. Just... Yep. Pretend you're not at work. Pretend these, you're just hanging out with your buddies and another buddy asks you a question. Yeah, that way. right. But it's so hard because in real life, we're all ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Outside of that world. And then you go in and you see the people, not, you see the people on the top of your profession. And you also see the people that you watched as a kid on television that are still in that profession. So it's hard to just play it cool and use common sense because then all of a sudden these weird factors start coming in. I guess I never had that sweat because this is I literally know this life and nothing else. I've never been in any sort of legit work environment. Like I worked at Toys R Us when I was a kid in Hollywood video but never been like Well, imagine Johnny 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 R Us comes in. <laughs> and, the owner of Toys R Us? <laughs> yes. Johnny R Us comes in. You know Johnny R Us. Yeah, his buddies with Mr. Target. Or the giraffe. The yeah. fucking Jeffrey. Jeffrey the giraffe comes in. That's a, big, a big deal. Geoffrey. He's back. He's got the R's backwards. You know, the whole He's deal. young. He's hip. He's with it. Backwards hat. <laughs> I have no shirt. idea what the fuck you guys are talking about. <laughs> We're right catching another world. <laughs> I always forget Ken's an old man. Like he's, he does, what was the. We have a kid that looks just like Professor Frank from Simpsons. Huh. And who did you say he looks like? Looks like um, a Stork from Animal House. And like, mm, no, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I've seen Animal House a lot. I know but... Animal House cover with the other old comedies next to Ace Ventura and the Mask. Right. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's talk a little bit about. Um, uh, I want to say one thing. Like, sure. About Dreamer, fucking, he was the guy that I could have. The only reason I have any success is because when we go there for tryouts and stuff, he took care of me. Like, yeah, well, he's basically the nicest human being in the world. I, I call yeah. him my wrestling dad, and he, this is before he was in the. I office. wonder if he's done anyone dirty. <laughs> I don't think so. Like. Just that story of you saying, who, what was it? who was that again? Sorry. Uh, oh, the same to Daniel Pewter. Everyone else would have just been like, let giving him, him shit. Yeah, let giving him, him shit. Johnny wanted him to. Yeah. Just let him burn. Just let him get caught. Let I would have I would have been like, let's get him. I feel. In my heart of heart, I wish I was had Dreamer's heart, but I don't think I do. The worst thing I would have, and, and nobody's ever done anything bad to me, but the worst thing I'll ever do to somebody or have so far is just be neutral. Like, I'll give you, there's a guy that came in who was a piece of shit to all of us. For a dark match, and he kind of like even pulled me aside. I was like, "Hey, man, I just want to let you know, like, all that shit in the past, in the past. My dad died recently, and I was like, you don't have to give me this fucking sales pitch. Like, I, I wouldn't bury you. I would. I'm not going to put you over. But if this anyone was asked, in WWE, like, or yeah, in WWE, he came yeah. in for a dark match, and I was just like, I'm not going to say anything bad about you. I'm yeah. not going to put you over. And if anyone asks, I say I didn't see it. But I'll, he's got to do all that <sighs> background work. And it felt so embarrassing. Like, right, I was like, course. I was embarrassed for him. Yeah. I was like, you know, you don't mean any of this shit. And you know, I'm way too smart to know that you're not being sincere right now. Yeah, I was like, it's yeah. cool, man. Don't sweat it. As you should be. But I would never be like, he sucks. Fuck that guy. I'm never going to. Plenty of other people did that for us. <laughs> there was no need for it. Um, but I'll help anybody because of Dreamer. Seidel, you, fucking anybody who's ever. What was the thing that Cornette said? Like, if, you, if you're not helping... Oh, we don't, quote, we don't quote him on this podcast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Any, anybody that you don't help in wrestling, yeah. just subconsciously, your insecurity is going to take your spot. Well, and, and literally, I remember after that, you got that speech, Ken literally called me the next day, which is... I don't know if you remember that. What? Because, like, I was in, in the Indies, and you were wrestling. You were in OVW and doing really well, and you were just like, hey, Jim Cornette was just like... If there's somebody good out there, you, we should be helping them. And yeah. you literally called me. You're like, hey, I want to help you. I was like, whoa, thanks. And then you did. But, I mean, it's... it's I it, wish we would have had somebody like that when we were coming up, you know? Right. Like, but, I mean, obviously it sunk in. What you said, Sean, sank Dreamer. into Ken, so it's like... Totally. Yeah. So it we all kind of did anyways, but that was kind of a thing that cemented. Like, your first time with WWE or whatever you're doing, that's your first... I kind of know how to do independent wrestling. Now it's my first, I'm learning all over again, like big time television wrestling. And at that first match was just Dreamer saying, sorry, buddy, you're a jobber. I'm going to squash you, kill you, go change in that dressing room over there. I could have a totally different outlook on things. Right. But I changed with everybody else in the dressing room. 
Dreamer legit comes up to me and he goes, uh, you know, I already have a job. Like, I'm fine. Like, let's try and make you look good I tonight. I already have a job. Yeah, I already have a job. Tommy, are you here? Let's try and make you look good tonight. I thought Tommy hated me. And then it, and then it just snowballed like that. Because I would talk to him every every once in a while, and, and I would get that, hello, Ken Anderson from Green Bay, what can I do for you? I'm like, <laughs> oh, this guy fucking hates me. I call him way too much. He, he once booked me in Milwaukee, and this is one of those things where, like, I was like, all right, I'll joke around with him. He's like, Cold Cabana, I like to book you in Milwaukee. And I go, oh, Milwaukee. Uh, you know, Algonquin. For, 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 yeah. 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 And he just goes, I don't know what that means, but you're booked on the 23rd. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll stop joking. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, Not a Wayne's World fan. Not a Wayne's World fan. Uh, okay, so po- post, um, I don't know, post WWE or post whatever you guys are doing, you guys have started this school in Minneapolis. Uh, and I would like to kind of talk about, I guess, the realities of... Uh, I don't know, like where you guys are now, coming down from the—I I don't know—the the high of being on television and all that stuff. And and Ken, you're—I mean, you're an, an independent, uncontracted wrestler. I'll say now, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And uh, just the realities of it for—I uh, don't know. I—I I, I guess your mentality looking into it, or or how you look at it, how you look at yourself now. Um. Hardships of wrestling. Do you look at yeah, it? Yeah, it's always a gr- it's a grind. You know, we, it's like you grind, grind, grind. You get there, and then eventually everybody goes back to the grind, grind, right. grind. Right. So you know, but it's just it's just life, and um, you know, I obviously made some major mistakes and missteps along the way. <clears throat> what are you? What are those? Well. I disagree with you all the time. Like, yeah. I know the ones you think are mistakes. I disagree with. Well, like opening my mouth about the Benoit incident, you know, like everybody, I, I turned on the news and everybody and their grandmother, all these ex WWE wrestlers and WCW CNN wrestlers. Things? Well, I, I ended up going on one cause I, I was listening to Nancy disgrace and all these other <laughs> talk show hosts and you know, everybody was burying WWE and I like, I felt really, um, like loyal to the WWE at the time, I've got to stand up. Nobody's speaking, nobody's giving our side of the mm-hmm. of the story or standing up for WWE. And so I did. And then I got asked to be on a couple different shows and I ended up going on Fox News. And that was the only one I did. I, I, I got asked to go on Nancy Grace, but we decided not to do that Who's one. Who's we? Is it, it's, um, well, they, they reached out to WWE. And, right, it's and all going through if, that office though, right? Right, yeah. And they, look... I ended up going on, uh, who's the girl on Fox News? Um, I don't know. But whoever it was, Trisha she Takanawa. was, what's that? Trisha Takanawa. Trisha Takanawa, right. <laughs> she For was Michael. sympathetic to, at least she gave us a fair shake, you know. Yeah. And they figured Nancy Grace, I'd go on there and just, I'd be up against five or six people that hated what? WWE and I'd get talked over and I wouldn't get a chance to. You say that now, and you're wearing the the military hat. Mm-hmm. Which what branch did you? Army Reserve. You're in the Army Reserve, and, and you when it's just it was interesting to me when you said that you were like, like us as a team, mm-hmm. like the way you sounded, like how you were as with WWE, mm. um, right? It, it sounded, I felt that way. Yeah, yeah it, it sounded really like did. you did. I still yeah. do. Not yeah. WWE, mm-hmm. just wrestlers. Yeah, I, I was just that person we we're just talking about earlier. I was like, I don't give a fuck what you do. I'd probably help my friends bury bodies. Like, if you're. <laughs> You're in your group, like <laughs> yeah, it's not. But I, my family. I always get, I, and I don't know. Maybe this is just like the weird cynic, or at least the the underground whatever I am in me. Even when I was there, I was always like, oh, "This is a giant corporation." Mm, but really? yeah, but you ne- you never that, that wasn't for you. It was real team when you were it, there. It was. It, it felt that way. And do you ever feel like when you left WWE, you weren't a part of it? Your team was with you at TNA, and then your team's with you at other shows. And maybe a little bit. I did a little bit. Really? Just. The you were, way you that were way I left, the, you were way more to the company than I ever was, as far as yeah. outside of WWE. Mm-hmm. I was on camera. There, Ken was like, "On your day off, you're our face here. On your day off, you're right. our face." Yeah, there. I, I did never a lot of that stuff. That. Until, a lot of stuff for the USO and the Ken really military, a, and I could totally see that. Does that so that kind of stuff? The more you do, the more that kind of stuff, like it, it, because you team know, building. Yeah, like but you, you know, for like some of our friends, it, doing having to do that stuff made them hate the company even more no i actually loved it i actually loved it and i'd hear people bitch about it all the time and i always looked at it as i am my own particular i'm my own brand yeah and this is free coverage for me right well someday i'm not gonna be a, i'm not gonna be working for wwe see, anymore but, and see, i'm gonna that's need different, that though 
Mm-hmm. Because before it was, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because I'm part of this. I'm representing this team. Right. Where I would have, th- see, I would have that mindset mm-hmm. a thousand percent. I think percents. you can have both. Can you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, I, and I did. I felt like a team, like it was a team effort. But at the same time, I felt like at the end of the day, I'm my own boss. I am my own company. And this is free press for me. So, yes, I'll gladly do it. And, and plus, I wanted to be a top guy. So it was like, this is the stuff you have to do. Right. And at the end of the day, no matter what, it still wasn't a bad fucking gig. Right. Right? Like, yeah. oh, God damn it. I have to fly to, to L.A. tomorrow to go to this red carpet event. Yeah. Fuck my life. <laughs> Uh, do you like? I don't know. Well, I, did this, does this save you from having to do a real job? The the uh, the academy, the academy. Yeah, I think the wrestling industry in general. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things where like I don't foresee me having another run at the WWE. It's possible that it happens, right. but you know I'm not banking on that. I'm not going to sleep every night like waiting for the phone to ring, waiting looking for the phone at it, to ring. looking yeah. at the rotary plugged into the wall. Yeah, like I did when I was first trying to get a job. Every time somebody would, you know, it was it was usually a bill collector, but I'm every time there would be like an unknown unknown number. number. Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for uh for Tommy to call. Way to it. I was in first time Kevin Kelly called me. I was in high school social studies, That's and I'd never seen an unavailable. I didn't have any bills or private people calling me. I, like it's always either a number or your friend. And I look at my flip phone. It says unavailable. What the fuck is unavailable? And I'm thinking like, wait, I sent that tape to Ken. Gave me Kevin Kelly's address, and I answer. He goes, Sean Devari? Yeah, Kevin Kelly from the World Wrestling Federation. I'm like, what the fuck? And I just like ran out of class. My teachers like, couldn't even stop me. I just like, ran in the hallway and had a thirty minute conversation with Kevin Kelly. Did you get detention out of it? I told my so everyone in school knew I was arrested, right. and then when I came back and was like, "What the fuck was that?" I was like that was the WWF. And he was like, "My teacher's like, really?" Aww. And then, and then the next <laughs> let year, him off. I was in junior, and the next year when I was a senior, I actually got to be on Sunday Night Heat, and like the school got to watch like Sunday Night Heat happen. I wrestled Stevie Richards, and like on Monday I'm in school. I love those stories. Yeah. Those are my That's favorite. Great. Dude, I got one about a kid we're training right now that one day we're gonna show everybody. Like, it's awesome. Oh, you talking about Brandon? Same thing. Same just a He thing. was on, he did. You, I'll show you after this podcast. But you guys got him work or what, what do you mean? Well, We're, now you got to tell a story. Yeah. Uh, so gonna, it's center, not a bad story. It's awesome. Like our best kid, fucking Jack. Fucking, well, don't say best kid. There's probably yeah. other kids listening. Right. That. Other, kids are, <laughs> other kids are fucking a 10 out of 10. This kid's a 10.25. Okay. And that's not at possible. This level. Everybody's, the, for being one less than one year in, he's a 10. Less than one year in 10 means you're drizzling shits. So he's, he's great at his training. Shoe athlete, looks great, everything. Super hot. Super hot, He's so a t- sexy. A 10. Ron Boyd's just uh, bulging out his back. <laughs> Ron Boyd's. And then uh, there's the... Uh, Still know, in high school? He just graduated. He's in his freshman or sophomore year of college. Have the Ron Boyd's become an erogenous zone now? Oh, I just had some pictures sent to me the other day. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. And then um, he told Ken, and then uh, I heard about this. So I like that Johnny Cash song. And they made an Eddie Guerrero video at Target Center when he died. I really like the song, so anytime I want to listen to it, like I just put on my, I put that video on my TV. I'm watching the Ten Bell Salute for Eddie, and there's this little boy just crying in the crowd, like a tight shot on this kid crying. His mom's holding him, and I'm, I look at him like, holy fuck, it's Brandon. Oh, like, wow. Ken, is this is this what you were telling me about that Brandon showed you? He was on that Raw at Minneapolis, and he goes, yeah, that was him. And I, I just, it's so crazy, surreal. I sent it to Chavo right away. I go, look at this, and I sent it on to Vicky too, and they're like, they're all just like, so, so cool. I have no idea if that's anything to do with his desire choice to become a pro wrestler mm. but this kid can make it and be as successful as he wants to be so yeah. this is a really cool thing i'll just tell him to start lying and tell him that's the day you decided you want to be a wrestler. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, know, but just like zach gowan got visited by hulk hogan, hogan. right right yeah, but yeah. i mean this is very much real maybe we stretch documented the truth a little bit. Yeah, yeah of course it's great on this tv show that you're producing <clears throat> what tv show i don't know yeah, it's <laughs> like, i'll add it a bad idea on this projects. makeup on this youtube tv I show you're somebody i always give my unfinished projects to right the, the, anything i just start and then lose interest in well, that's a lot. Because I was kind of talking, like, I was going to ask, like, Ken, like, I don't know, what, like, if you don't do this school, like, what do you do? Um, we, we do the school. You do we the, just make it work. You right. Know? I, I remember listening to the podcast that you and I did, and after you, you did a little wrap up, and you were like, you know, Ken's a guy that I think that if he doesn't work for one of the companies, like, he'll, he'll make a go at it. Mm. He'll make it work. And I, I feel that way that's every day. The, like, that's we're that's make the this team work. I was talking about, those guys. That, those guys are if they're WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, Japan, whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. Those guys that'll make a go at it regardless are the group I was talking about. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily the company. That's my brotherhood. You MVP. Now, like you brought, 
Kevin and uh, Rami into my group. So like, even though we're completely different, I don't places, know this Rami character, but you uh, might be. What's t- with you? You and these fucking real names. Like, you guys know the internet exists, right? You just mentioned <laughs> Two Rivers Jack on Wikipedia. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> two separate whoa, people. Whoa. Two separate people. Uh, K Fabe. Yeah, but so, but th- that was going on. Like, hey, what, are you getting a real job? Or are you opening an academy? Because you've tried, you've done a million different things to try to do some kind but of. But not side really hustle. in wrestling, except for the show we did in Manila, and that was kind. of... I said, if I do anything in wrestling, I want it to be good. If it's mine, you know, if yeah. I work for a promoter in a shit show, that's his show. I just <laughs> showed up and did my thing. But anything I do in wrestling, I want it to be good. So that way, if it fucking fails. Fucking, you know, bright and blow out, not not dimly lit candle that went out, you know. Mm-hmm. So you did my show Manila, and then this is one we talked about the logistics of the academy and. Air Were you Ken. on that show, Ken? No, no, he couldn't go. I couldn't. TNA, TNA wouldn't let me go. Sons of bitches! Mm-hmm. What a fun time that was. It was wow. amazing, and I remember I was so embarrassed to ask you to come and be my ring announcer. I was so happy just to be a ring announcer. You, you were such an integral part of that show because you weren't a ring announcer. You were literally like an MC host, like a. I'm like a general manager type character. You conducted the press conference. Guys that couldn't really talk well, you kind of steered the questions to make them give good answers. And even the show, like, it was a one-man band. I was doing everything. So when there was too much time, you'd vamp with the crowd. It was great. Yeah. Like, I had no idea how... I just wanted my friend to come with me. Yeah. So I had someone to talk to on the flight. <laughs> and then you fucking made that show, like, so much easier oh. for me. Well, I feel like I'm... I, I'm transitioning into whatever I am here in wrestling. And I think that starts with the podcast, you know, like... Totally. And that's... I don't the worst know. advice I've ever given anybody in my life was, <laughs> Sean, I'm thinking about doing this podcast. Are you my first guest? That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Stupid idea. I told him it was a horrible idea. I think Jimmy Jacobs mm. told me it was dumb, too. But mm. maybe he's like me and I don't listen to podcasts. But anybody who's ever listened to a podcast ever would know it's fucking what people do. All right. And then now, I told you starting a school was a stupid idea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, well, you might have been right. No, I'll tell you what. I, I, if I ever get out of the wrestling business, I know what it takes now to get something off the ground. Yeah. It's a lot of work. So you, you guys have jumped in. Uh, tell me your guys, uh, how you're, I mean, this is, so you have a lot of people working with you at this school, including your brother, who's now on television, which is pretty crazy. And yeah. that's part of the, you know, part of the fun for you of doing that, of seeing the kid cry and then he's your student. Part of the fun for me is, is doing this podcast for se- over seven years now and having an aria on the show. And being like, I think, you know, not, I'm not taking any credit, but I'm just saying like in that thing and being like, man, here's a guy who's been working hard. And then four years later, you see him, you know, do his dream. And it's almost like I feel like, oh, I was betting on the right guys. You know, like I almost feel that way. Like a lot of the guys that have done my show early and have gone on to whatever. It's like, oh, it's because I bet on him. Like, have you ever could, been wrong? I never have. Those we, guys stand out. So some people, have, you know, have done this really? and, and gone away. But. Um, but right, you, you, you're around and you see it. So you're, I mean, your brother will come and help and you, got, you guys got a whole team, but essentially it, it is just you two on this. We own the, the place part. and then everyone else is just a coach. Yeah. But we have an open door policy from the fucking coaches to the fucking kids that set up to guests like you that come in, the fucking janitor that comes cleans the place. Good idea is a good idea is a good idea. You have a janitor? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm Eric, there at 3 a.m., I'm cleaning. Yeah, right. Eric Cannon is very integral in our our curriculum too, like Everything. coming up with different ideas for how to train the students and what we shouldn't do and what works, what doesn't work. And he's a promoter too. So he kind of can tell you like, man, I really wish I had this. I really wish I had that. And it kind of he, steers shit into like, Oh yeah, that would be something that you could plug into like a wrestling show. Would maybe help a guy get more work. Do you see it sparking like his creativity? Like when he starts talking about it, do you see, you know, like, how Oh you, yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll sit there until two o'clock in the morning sometimes at the Academy after our training's done and just brainstorm and bounce up different ideas off each other. I'm pretty sure you gave me a couple when you came into a seminar, just a fresh set of eyes. Sometimes you're so far in the forest, you can't see the fucking trees or whatever. Like, like one of our trainees is like, it'd be nice to have a clock out here. It's like, fuck, we don't have a clock. Like, <laughs> you know, like a good idea is a good idea. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you gave me, I asked you to come early. I said, just look around, just tell me what you see, what you think. And he gave me a few pointers that were good, just things that were... He didn't do any of them. No, no, but he, you know, he put them down in his little notebook. No. Right. It was like when you said the other day, I was telling him, like, we're doing the podcast with the aces and eights. You're like, I'm on a fucking motorcycle. Like sometimes you're so far oh, in yeah. the stick, you don't even realize like, oh my God, I'm missing a completely obvious thing here. Right, yeah. And we I, did the yeah, aces yeah. and eights things for a year, year and a half, and... Not once did we see a motorcycle. <laughs> why, why would well, a motorcycle? when you're throwing that much money in a talent, you can't yeah. afford a <laughs> motorcycle. Because at least uh, Victoria had the motorcycle in lockdown, so they couldn't give it to the main right. event. Yeah. Yeah. Did she? Yeah, no. she come on a crotch rocket. Is that, is that a real thing? I don't even remember. She did for a while. So, you were, it was right when I first got there. There was so much weird shit in that, like over the years. And now, even now, you see like all this 
turnover and trouble and whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. But like, it's so like funny to think back of like, oh, I guess she came out on a crotch rock. Right. Like, like, yeah. And you were in aces yeah, and eights. Let's try this. Yeah. Fucking Orlando Jordan squirting what looked like cum all over himself. <laughs> right. Like yeah. the top of the ramp. That we, was a part was, of it. What was the stupid thing we were just talking about before we got on the podcast? Probably you. But no, I was talking about something at TNA where it's just like, how did this happen? How did this like get done? Like who... Who's oh the fucking Who Joker? Checked off on no it. fucking five years after the Dark Knight comes out, Sting. There's a Jersey Joker. Shore guy, and Sting is the Joker now. <laughs> I was like, did they just fucking open a time capsule from 2005 and and 2011 and do all this shit all of a the, sudden? The Joker thing, the Joker Sting was actually some of my favorite Sting work too. Yeah. I like I liked that Joker thing, Joker Sting that like. You just missed. Right? <laughs> I feel you, you it flowed beautifully. Uh, yeah, he, and he was great doing that stuff. He was. But I mean, I see your I point. I feel like a, a Sting heel turn would have been great, sure. period. Yeah. If it happened in 2005 or <laughs> right. six when The Dark Knight came out, maybe it could have been Gangbusters. Mm-hmm. What other weird stuff did you do in, in TNA? Mm-hmm. Anything super weird? Fucking Samoa Joe yes. was the weirdest thing. Fucking Vince Russo had me go out because I wore a camouflage hat one time. And backstage yeah never wore it on tv but because he saw me wearing camouflage once i was the steve austin guy and he we had a wedding on tv one of those televised weddings that never goes according to plan and he had me come out in a three-piece fucking camouflage suit like a tuxedo <laughs> did, you pay for tuxedo. did you steal it no did you pay for that no they just had it they they went out they rented a camouflage tuxedo and had me wear it to this event. If Ryan Reynolds could like, steer, steal a dare, uh, was it Daredevil? No, a Deadpool suit. You should have he's, stolen it. Mm, Did that a thing? They said the last day of shooting, he said he fucking put one in his bag. There you go. <laughs> Sweet. You I took the Aces and Eights best. I took that. Hanging in the academy, yeah. It's one of my the, favorite pieces of art. We, art. Memorabilia. Art. No, it is art. You keep that. Bro, if you, come, <laughs> I don't, you haven't been in our place in almost a year now. Like, right. It's, it's almost like a little museum of... <clears throat> Batista sent us some stuff. I have Boris Malenko's original wrestling plan framed and on the wall. How'd you get that? From Eddie Sharkey. Oh, wow. I, I, we have some really fucking a, cool shit. Like, sometimes I'll do that. from Kurt Angle. I would cut, start, like, windexing shit, like the mirror, mirrors, what are they called? The picture frames. And I'll just stand there, like, look at it, be like, you know, a Kurt Angle singlet with a fucking rip in, like, one seam. You're like, I right. if someone fucking grab him too hard there. Like, sure. a little blood stain on Batista's trunks. I'm like, you want, a, go, you want a Goldman headband? Mm. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're, we have your art in there. Absolutely. We have a <laughs> Coke Cabana, boom, uh, boom. The, Scott, the Scotty Goldman headband, which is, says Cabana Rama and Colt Cabana. Uh, I, I had made a couple that said Scotty Boy. Nice. Can I have one? I was Can doing, we, please? I'll, if you really want yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we do. I keep every, this is the nicest gift anyone's ever got me. I'm holding a fidget cube right now where you came for the seminar and then um, I never even heard of this fucking thing. And I guess you saw me just like fidgeting and doing all kinds of shit. And you're like, what's your address? This is a week's later. And I go, I, was like, I, I saw something that you might like. I was like, I don't know. And you sent me this. Well, it's because he was... I don't know if you noticed or not, but he's getting misty over there. I'm like, so emotional. <laughs> yeah, you know, for real. And it's, it's genuine because you took time out of your day to think, think about him. Well, he, he you said what? That you, you just needed something. I think you were, you were like doing... A million things at once. A million things. But none of them well. I think you were vape penning or something. Oh yeah, it's just something. I just need a fidget with and something. And you needed this, and I was like, if, well, I, if I had a fucking clicky pen, I wouldn't have been vaping. Right, right. right. I, I have the vapes. So I haven't seen a, you vaping. Are you still vaping? I have this. I have all my fidget toys. Amazing. Uh, and Marty has the other one. And <laughs> for and the next two months, it was all fidget toys. All and fidget just, spinners. Well, that that thing, yeah. yeah. Which is funny because the fidget spinner became popular at, like right after we had that conversation for the wrong mm-hmm. reasons too. Like it was, it was people were, that didn't need them. We're using them and being distracted from their actual work. Right. Like we have yeah. a kid that trains with his autistic and he was asking me, he's like, I bought a fidget toy. It's not doing anything for me. I was like, well, do you have a hard time concentrating? He goes, no, not really. I was like, do you find yourself concentrating on the toy? He goes, yeah. I was like, well, then you don't need it. <laughs> but all these kids are like, oh, the fucking ADD kids got one I want too. And the teacher's talking to them and they're just fucking staring at their toy, ignoring them. Whereas me, like the whole time we've been talking, I've been doing it. Yeah. Because it just, but it helps me stay focused on this. Well, I'm glad. And when I, every time I put it down, I pick up my phone. You give me dirty looks. <laughs> keep with the with the fidget spinner. I got, my, I got one for everybody. I got one for Ken. I got one for. Uh, you got one for Joe my kids. Shannon. Yeah, I got them matching colors. I give them the kids. Uh, Ken's girlfriend got me a Bluetooth one that has flashing lights and it plays music on it. So anytime I'm someplace public, I just annoy should, everybody. You should with sell it. Academy. Those are things. What? 
Academy fidget spinners. Mm. If you need one, you, you'll get one. <laughs> a lot of people don't need them. Uh, all right. So, I mean, this is our, our, uh, our kind of our final plug here for... Uh, Jesus Christ, how long was that? It's, uh, it was a thousand minutes. <sighs> Fuck it with the stops and starts. <laughs> 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 um, but you guys have a new, a new class coming in October, right? October 6th, we start our fourth class. Um, we still have a few spots left. They kind of fill up as we get closer, so I don't know when this comes out, but we go about one a week. Yeah. So as we get closer, they'll fill up faster. October is a good month, too. We have a boot camp on September 30th and October 1st. The last boot camp we did was awesome. It's just a pro wrestling crash course, and then we just award somebody a scholarship that's most fitting for it. Oh, you, oh so it, it's just you guys. Hmm? I remember Windy City had like a boot camp, and I wanted to go to it so bad. It was like 100 bucks to join, and yeah, they'd probably knock off 100 Take that or like hundred off of your yeah off your tuition. If it you was like a fantasy that. camp or a boot. Yeah, I guess it's just really just to see what people got and if they want to do it. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people that we see in our curriculum, like I don't feel like they're gonna want to do this for a career because it's a lot more work. The training is the just to get you started. Well, here I'll stop you on that. So, so you sell it like this is you have to want to do this for a career to be able to train. No, nope. no, no. You just have to let us okay. know what you want to do. If you if you're someone hmm. that does not want to do this for a career, we will just say what is it you want to do. Based on that, we'll create a curriculum for you. Yeah, success is in the eye of the beholder, I believe. We believe. And if you just want to do this because you need to blow make off some money, steam, nah, maybe you don't even need to make money. You just, this is right, this is so, your this be softball for people. Pick up basketball totally. or yeah, softball. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. It's a way that you blow off some steam on the weekends, get away from the wife and kids. Mm-hmm. But there are people who genuinely want to go to the WWE. There are people that, just like indie wrestling, you know, they want to. Just get into the wrestling business and go to Japan. That's not wrong. And we'll do what we can to try to mold you and help you down your path. That's the boot camp coming up on the 30th and October 1st. And then we have the Xbox seminar on October 30th, which you've done a seminar for us. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's, I love doing it because with you, Ken was saying about CD the other day. and like Who's I, CD? Chris Daniels and like uh, Mickey James came through. Like When you become friends with somebody, you never talk about work. Like we were even trying to figure out how to talk about wrestling in this fucking podcast because you're our buddy. We never talk about wrestling, but just watching you do shit. I was like, wow, I never knew. If we ever talked about wrestling, it was 18 years ago. I've never right. seen what you've learned yeah. over the last 18 years. And just hearing you break, like, you know, you have to know the rules before you can break them. Shit like that. That was a quote on the whiteboard for a long time. I was like, man, this is amazing. I've never heard other people's philosophy on shit. Right. It's, it's, I, I guess I don't, yeah. You don't think about how, smart your friends are at what they're doing because we've all been doing it at a high level but right we all just fuck around with each other that's after your initial introduction i don't know any close friend that we talk about wrestling after that first yeah. combo i, I rode a cd for three years every week five days a week we never talked about wrestling and then yeah. he came into the seminar and i was blown away by all the shit that i was learning from cd or even what you can do because like what a fun thing for me and i think i kind of feel like now that we've done this i kind of feel like this is why triple h likes nxt so much is he's had to be a Triple H for so fucking long. How many mm. ideas he had that says, ah, oh, that wouldn't work for Triple H, but he could give it to somebody else. Mm. I've mm. been Sean Devario for so long. You've been doing the comedy shtick for so long. Like watching you actually go full tilt is like, wow, Cabana's really fucking good. Like <laughs> you never see him do some crazy fucking hold or whatever the fuck or some cute way in and out or something because that's not what they pay to see him do. Right. Or, or even like um, with myself, like I've never done a baby face comeback ever. It's so fun to get to do one, you know? Yeah. Oh, there was really... somebody that was oh Dinsmore was another one Dinsmore was like fuck you forget how good of a wrestler Nick Dinsmore is because right. you only see Eugene and you know, he's like, been training he's been a trainer for so long for uh, everybody for everybody and right? I, I thought I thought if you want to go to WWE he's the best seminar you could do because he's known from 2004 pretty much the last year over time what they've it's been a constant. Right. Probably him and Dr. Pr- Dr. Tom Absolutely. also yeah it would be another one you'd be surprised how Eddie many of our students I think a lot of our students they didn't sign up for the Nick Dinsmore seminar because they thought that Eugene was a shoot. Oh, uh, stop. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We'd had like two, was it two or three days out from the seminar? It kind of is. Everybody was there and I said. <laughs> He's from Kentucky. It kind of is. And we said, hey, what's the deal with the Eugene seminar? Why aren't anybody, why isn't anybody signed up? There was only like five people signed up for it at the time. Yeah. Maybe less. Like what's what's going on? And one of the guys just raises, and I we said just please be honest. Yeah, you know, there's no heat. And one of the guys just said like I don't know what I'm going to learn from Eugene. Eugene. That's and, crazy. And a couple other people didn't they didn't say it, but you could just see them sort of nodding along and like yeah, 
the fuck is a uh, <clears throat> special needs person gonna? Yeah, gonna gonna. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But they, do, do they not even know that he like a year ago he was training the stars of the future? No, they don't. They, <laughs> they don't. don't. So yeah. some people, do, it's such a weird. We think and everyone's on the internet. Everyone knows everything. You know right. What's funny? And when they when he did when all was said and done. After the weekend, don't you say it was everybody was mine. fucking don't blown away. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say it was the best one, and I was like, "Don't you? No, fucking, no. <laughs> don't you fucking dare!" I wasn't there for that. No, one, that's so. true. You're gone. Yeah, it was the best one. <laughs> um, all right, what's Cabana the, is the best. How do they sign up? You go to the academyprowrestling.com. Anything you need is on there. But if something is not on there that you're looking for, if a specific question, you can always call, text, email us, or you can schedule a consultation online. So you can just come in. Speak with us in person. We can show you the place. You can watch a little bit of training. And I heard they get a discount with the code Colt. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Would that be good for your art of wrestling? What do you want? Yeah, Colt is good. Okay, if you guys can right. go on uh, the promo code, I'll make it probably by the time this comes out. Just do Colt, and we can knock five hundred dollars off. Your Holy commission. shit! Bring it down to twenty five hundred. Holy shit! Holy shit! Ja. <laughs> Yeah. Good deal. And we also Before have you some release sweet... podcast, make sure you text me, make sure yeah. I put, put in that promo code. Now that I know how to build websites. We also have some sweet new shirts up on ProWrestlingTees.com. Sweet. Oh, yeah, it's your shit, too. Fuck, we're giving more, him more mm-hmm. plugs. It's not that we're coming here to yeah. plug our shit. We're plugging all his shit. <laughs> yeah. What's that, under the Academy? You guys have Under the stuff? Academy or under Mr. Anderson, under uh, Ken Anderson stuff. So. Where, are you at, where are you at on everything? Mm, Twitter, Instagram? Twitter, Twitter, I'm at Mr. Mr. Ken Anderson. Facebook is just we, we just have the academy Facebook and Facebook for me is just friends and family yeah like it's the one thing that I just want I don't have you know I post something and I don't have a bunch of stupidity stupid comments that I have to wade through and sift through mm-hmm. um, but Instagram is Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R Ken Anderson that's it and I have just the Instagram Estevari it's boring if you go to the academy stuff that's it's really all you, what's the academy it's at the academy pro wrestling for the Instagram and the Twitter is at uh, the Academy SOPW School of Professional Wrestling. Son, son of a. At the Academy son SOB. Of, son, <laughs> SOB. Gentlemen, that's a podcast. Thanks. All right, once again, the Academy Pro Wrestling.com. Use that code, get a couple bucks off, and also learn about professional wrestling, become a wrestler, join my industry, join me in a locker room. That's, that's how we become friends. We sit in locker rooms, and we talk, and we have a good time. If you're not in Minnesota or don't want to move to Minnesota, there's tons of great schools all around the country. Jay Lethal runs in Tampa. Truth Martini is in Detroit. Pat Buck has two schools. He has one in New Jersey, and he also has one with Kurt Hawkins in Long Island, New York. He's a WWE superstar. There is no excuse if you live in New York and you want to train to be a pro wrestler not to train with somebody in the WWE. And that's Create a Pro in Long Island. And Dave Marquez opened a free school in Los Angeles as part of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. No excuse not to do that. All right, if you want to be a wrestler, that's where you should be headed. Otherwise, you got to listen to my plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, coldmerch.com, digitalcult.com, the best way to support Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook, slash AOW Podcast, slash Colt Cabana, my storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, which three new episodes are almost done, plus past archives of this show are ad-free on stitcherpremium.com, slash Colt, use the code Colt, get a free month, coltwrestling at gmail.com, my very public email, maybe your promoter won't put me on your upcoming show or convention, I got a YouTube channel, I also got a website, coltcabana.com, I got a PO box there, you can send me something fun, upcoming, Friday, September 15th, Cleveland, Ohio, Ohio, AIWrestling.com, Saturday, September 16th, Marietta, Ohio, RemixMain.Weebly.com, Friday and Saturday, September 22nd, 23rd, Las Vegas, Nevada, I'll be doing commentary, ROHWrestling.com, Friday, September 29th, Montreal, Canada, Facebook slash CRW Wrestling, Saturday, September 30th, Ottawa, Canada, C4Wrestling.com, Sunday, October 1st at 2 p.m. in Oshawa, Alpha-1Wrestling.com, 7 p.m. in Toronto, Facebook slash Greek Town Wrestling. Saturday and Sunday, October 7th and 8th, Dublin and Belfast, Ireland, OTTWrestling.com. October 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Chicago. Commentary, ROHWrestling.com. October 25th, 26th, and 27th, Los Angeles and Riverside, California, LuchaVavoom.com. October 28th and 29th, Gainesville, Florida. Saturday, I'm doing a live podcast, and Sunday, I will be wrestling at thefestfl.com. That is the show for the week. Thanks for joining me this week. 
Thanks for listening. You know I always appreciate it. Thanks to Ken Anderson and Sean Devari representing the Academy of Professional Wrestling. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins with music, Dane Miller and Creaky with all that tech help. Sponsors, HighSpots.com, a VOD service that is amazing. Watch those PWGs, watch those $5 wrestlings, AMA knee pads, gear, mask, a wrestling ring. OneHourTees.com, they help run Pro Wrestling. Crate.com, they help run Pro Wrestling. Tees.com, which will soon have a actual store in Chicago. And TweakedAudio.com slash Colt, the earbuds that I use. Get over 30% off of free shipping just because you listen to this show. Can't wait to be on the road in Ohio this week. AIW, one of my favorite places to be. Chandler Biggins is no longer with us, but he's always celebrated when we go to Cleveland. I always think of him. I miss him so much. Chandler, I miss you so much. He always listened to this show. If there's podcasts in heaven, he subscribes to The Art of Wrestling. Also, if you're interested in hearing what happened, uh, kind of the whole story with Chandler, John Thorne and his podcast, The Card is Going to Change, did a, a whole episode about it, and I highly recommend it. All right, hey, this has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Three-timer club, me and Cliff? You're in the hey, I think I'm technically the three-timer club, too. Yeah, there's probably people. Because well, Marty's probably did, uh, a, f- a seven-timer. Yeah. How about active in-ring wrestlers? Who's had the most? Okay. Who's had the most, Cliff? But people have done live shows and stuff, too. Yeah, I did the live show. Yeah, you did a live yeah. show. All right. Well, you're good. You're doing good, Sean. Right. Fuck you and your three-timer. Congratulations. <laughs>